All right, I'm back like herpes. Uh, this is the second installment in my chess book collection. Um, this is the second shelf. And here we go. So the second shelf theme starts with end games. I've been I was harping on end games in in the first series in the first installment and here is the second one. Here's my first one. I can't even fit this book this is a monster book, by the way. This is a beautiful collection of endgames. This is Laszlo Polgar, right? The, the Polgar sisters, Judith Polgar and her less 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 known sister. I forget, I don't even know her name. Um, his book about endgames. Um, if you can see down below here, it's 4,560 positions. 4,560 positions. That's crazy. And he separates that into 171 types of positions. Some end, some end game books have 100 positions. Not even, this guy has 171 types. So, it, and the book, I mean, this is like a seven pound book. Uh, it, the pages are, I mean, obviously the pages are huge because the book is huge, but it has a nice glossy feel to it. It's almost silky, right? If you wanted to use highlighter, which I wouldn't ever mar this book with highlighter, uh, but and, w and what would be the purpose anyway? There's just diagrams. There's nothing for you to highlight. Um, amazing. Gorgeous. Like, I want to run my... It's like s so smooth. Like the legs of young Korean boys. Wait, what? Anyway. Monster. Monster book. Uh, I feel very fortunate to have this book. I got this book at a pretty good discount. I think I ended up paying thirty-one dollars total, or maybe thirty-five dollars. I can't remember exactly, including the shipping and handling. Uh, and for a book of this size, and just to have a book like this, uh, completely worth thirty-five bucks. Okay. Ugh. Next, and continue with my end games. Right. Uh, this is a really good book. Jeremy Solomon's complete end game course from beginner to master. He separates the exercises or he gives you a progression, right? That from obviously from beginner to master. He starts you off with end games that he thinks you should know as a beginner, right? So obviously, and um, basic stuff. And then you progress little by little and you build up uh, you build up your knowledge or you build up your ability. And it's the instruction is really good, right? And the instruction uh and Jeremy Soma has a nice writing style. Uh, he's not the greatest of chess players, but you don't have to be to become a great teacher. He's an international master, uh, and he has a good writing style. Uh, and if you're going to study the end games without getting bored to tears, I recommend Silman's book, and it's just a good layout for improvement. So highly recommend it. Not that I've read it all. Like I said, I'm just starting out my progress. My, my project of learning chess, improving on chess, and end games is going to be right at the top of the list, but I haven't even gotten there yet. Next, a classic. Uh, I don't know if I can... Let me butcher this guy's name. This guy's name, like he's not a GM that deserves to be called Mr. or GM. Uh, Dvoretsky. Dvoretsky? I think that's close. Dvoretsky's Endgame Manual. This is the second edition, um, and this is a classic in chess. Uh, if you and 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 he has a clear explanations. I've read a few of these, and the explanations are clear, and which is important because end games are pretty much like um, they're, they're kind of like forced moves almost. There are a bunch of forced moves. That's the beautiful thing. That's the beautiful thing about end games um, is that there's less um, there's less variations as, in regards to like. Well, my opponent might not even play that, right? So you're you're pretty much learning. If you do this, you're gonna win, right? You're getting most of these puzzles are like white to play, and he's gonna win if he plays it correctly, right? If you if you play this out the right way, then you're gonna win. Or if you play this out the correct way, you can get a draw. Right? That's the beauty of end games. Um, but it takes it takes patience. It takes time to learn it. It takes time to learn. The principles and it and and the execution is a monster, right? You'll look at a you look at a setup and it'll look like 
like you know like the famous Lucena position and like you you could never figure that out on your own right you would never figure out certain of the these certain endings on your own you'll never fi figure out and even after you read this even after you get the instructions even after you, you'll still butcher the end game you'll still fail to convert what should be an, an automatic win right uh, but this will help you uh, towards that aim so study the end game this is a classic you can't go wrong next this one I've run into recently and I've heard good things about it, and I've actually opened up and act uh, and actually I'm gonna say actually ten times um, and I actually have played through a bunch of these openings actually I'm going to stop saying actually. It's it's a it's a. This is my bookmark, right? So I'm only 18 pages in, um, but I've gone through it, you know, slowly, thoughtfully, and I think I've benefited from the first examples, which I cannot recall. But if I see them again, I think, you know, I'll recall them. Um, ben Perlos. Endgame tactics. It is isn't en engaging. It's engaging. That's the important thing about endgames. If you were a robot, or if you were like super dedicated, or if you had a will, you know, beyond like a, a, a five-year-old, which I don't have, then you would push yourself to learn the endgames, even though it was tedious, even though it was boring. You would just push yourself through it. But I can't, right? I need. It, it helps me. Like I, it's almost a necessity that the writing be. Uh, engaging that the progression be uh, smooth right and that I'm not overwhelmed and Van Perlo has an approach that makes studying the end game uh, amenable is that the right word okay so Van Perlo good end game book uh, De Jesus de Jesus de la Villa. That is the correct pronunciation. Double L in Spanish is a Y. Hundred end games you must know. All right, we had uh, Polgar's four thousand five hundred and sixty end games diagrams. This is a hundred you must know. So obviously, these are the most recurring end games, or at least the most important. And I'm assuming they're important because they're recurring, right? More they, they come up the mo more often than the other ones. Um, so, right, you get diagrams, you get uh, explanations, you get little boxes. I'm sure I don't remember if this one had little arrows, but either way, another endgame book, good book. How to play chess. Karsten Müller, 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 Müller with the U, with the umlaut. I don't know how to pronounce that. That's German. And Wolfgang Payet. I don't know why I'm trying to pronounce that in the original. Uh, but it is Wolfgang. But most people will say Wolfgang. But the V, the W in German is V, right? It's Volkswagen. I sound like Hitler. I think all Germans sound like Hitler. Is that is that is that terrible to say? Anyway. Karsten Müller and the Wolfgang Payeken uh, end games, um, yeah, typical stuff, right? But good stuff, important stuff, important stuff. Pick an end game book. You don't have to have thirteen end game books like I have, right? That's ridiculous. Uh, but I am ridiculous. Um, C J S Purdy. C J S Purdy. C J S Purdy was a, I think he was a world champion correspondence player. Um, I never know what, I never know, uh, what, uh, I never know how good those players are, correspondence players. I'm like, it's not like today. There's no such thing as a good correspondence player today. They all cheat. You have computers, right? Like, 50 years ago, if you were a great correspondence player, it, those were your moves. At most, somebody was helping you, but who was helping you that's better than you, right? Who do you know in your hometown that was better than you? So back then, if you were a correspondence champion, that meant something. Right? It didn't mean you were a GM. Uh, it didn't mean like that you were one of the best players in the world. But you were good at chess. Today, who knows what it means? Right? I don't think it really... I, I'm sure people still play correspondence chess. I know people still play correspondence chess. But with how easily it would be to cheat, yeah, I don't know. I'm skeptical. I'm a cynical guy, I guess. 
Anyway, CJ CJ is pretty has a great writing style, and he has a good teaching style. Uh, if you've never heard of him, pick up one of his books or read an excerpt on Amazon. He's going to explain things to you, and he has rules. You see that? Rule 29. Go to another page. Uh, go to another page. Come on, Purdy, you're letting me down here. Where's another? Obviously, if he has Rule 29, you, there's Rules 1 through 28, and there's more. Right? So he breaks things down into rules, which is really accessible right, to the, to the average chess student. Give Purdy a try. You, I think you will not be disappointed. Next. Just facts. This is Albert. Albert is another contemporary chess author. He's really popular. I think he has a famous like opening repertoire for black, opening repertoire for, for white. Uh, I think I have the one for black. Uh, anyway, Just the Facts. As the title says, it's the book of the year. You know, when I'm looking at this on the screen, I don't know which is my left from right. Okay, book of the year, but uh, puzzles. Endgame puzzles. Uh, and it's not a ton. And look how much. Look at look at the summary. Like the this bottom part here is the summary, right? Anytime you have a chess book that gives you a summary, awesome. Get that book, right? If you see if you buy an opening book especially, and the opening book gives you like concepts of this opening, and then it and then it gives you an example, and it gives you like some sample games, right? Some um, annotated games. And then it gives you a summary at the end. I get that book. That's going to help you remember, right? The purpose of that opening, the, the what you're looking for, the tactics, uh, what you're looking in the middle game for. What's the major thing? Like, are you looking to push the e e4 pawn, right? Or are you trying to prevent your opponent from getting in a certain move with this opening? Like, what is this opening like uh, meant to do? What are the plans behind it? What are the themes behind it? If you can learn that. It'll help you remember the variations. It'll help you remember what to do if you get out a book. Which seems to be every game I play. Okay. More. More endgame. Improve your endgame by Glenn Fleer. I don't know who Glenn Fleer is. I don't remember why I bought this book. Uh, maybe, most likely, it was a good Amazon recommendation. But, look at the diagrams. Not a, not a lot of heavy stuff. Right, look at the diagrams. It's basic stuff. It's fundamental stuff. I think maybe that's what drew me to it. That it starts off with fundamentals. Very fundamental stuff. But, I mean, this is not unique to this book. Uh, so, this is another book. I can't say really anything about it because I haven't really gone through it. End game strategy. Um, Mihal Shereshevsky. I'm pretty sure I pronounced Michal worse than I pronounced Shadashevsky. But there you go. Uh, Cadigan Chess, uh, another book publisher. In-game strategy. Uh, let's look at the title here. Uh, the table of contents. Basic principles of end-game play. Good stuff. Centralization of the king. Right, strategic rule. Role of the pawns in the endgame. The problem of exchanging during the endgame. Do not hurry your endgame. Schematic thinking. The principle of two weaknesses, the struggle for the initiative, all good general stuff about end games, what you should be thinking about as you're looking at the board and deciding on what to do. This is going to help your chess. More end game. A famous, famous author, Eugene Zanosko Borowski, right? I think the Flyers used to have Bob. Bob. Borowski? Was it Borowski? Anyway, they traded to him to Columbus, which was the worst decision they've made in a long time, which is saying quite a bit for the Flyers. Uh, anyway, back to chess. How to play chess endings. Uh, Borowski's a great chess teacher. Um, look at all that you're getting as far as explanation. You are getting a bunch of variations up here, but and I never really like to see too much of that. And look, here you're getting more. Again, you got to follow that. You got to play that out, and you're playing it out without really see, knowing why you're playing out like moves five and six. So not so great. But look at you're getting one page. You, look, you're getting a lot of lesson for just this one diagram, right? That is going to be instructive. Next, finally, no, not finally. The second to last Endgame book, Pandolfini. Uh, Pandolfini is famous. 
right? He has a Pendolfini's, I think, middle game course, Pendolfini's end game course. He's a good writer. Uh, he's an older writer. He's not really a current uh, author, but uh, another Maiden Four, another Maiden Four, and this is the kind of how it's broken down. And you might appreciate that, right? You might. He gives you a theme alignment. He gives you a theme split pawn defense. He gives you a theme. Uh, horizontal opposition, direct opposition, right? So he names he names the diagram, and then and then he he tells you how to win if if it's your move with white, or maybe he tells you how to win if it's your move with black, or how to draw it, whatever, right? He tells you how to go about it, right? Uh, pieces and pawns in action. That's part three, and then you get right. So this is a, the breakdown of this end game book is really nice. It's really instructive. Recommend it. And finally, uh, the famous, let's put it so you can read it, Rook Endings by Levenfish and Smysloth. All right, this is, this is a very popular or very famous book, uh, which I bought used. Uh, thank you, Stephen Craig Miller. Um, so, Rook Endings, Rook Endings, probably the most popular endings in chess, right? As in recurring, right? So... If you want to get good at rook endings, I don't think you can go wrong with Love and Fish and, and Smithsloff. It's become a, a bit of a of a classic in chess for a reason. A reason I cannot really tell you why, because I haven't read the book. But I have it. There it is. Okay, so that's my end games book. That ends that. Uh, the next set of books, which is still on my second shelf, are... More of like a holistic approach to improving in chess, right? And you'll get you'll you'll understand better when I show you the books. Uh, so let's just do that. Aaron Nimzovich, my system, classic, classic, right? This is the old style of chess, and I don't really mean to disparage it. If any of us were actually good at the old style of chess, we would be ten times better than we actually are. But we're not even good enough to play the old style of chess. We don't even play the old style of chess well, but we want to study how to play modern chess, which is... I, I don't really think you can appreciate modern chess, which I mean you can't really understand modern chess. You can't really implement modern chess play until you understand the old style, until you understand the development from old style to new style. And that relied heavily, not not as heavily as the, the Nimzovich makes it out to be, like... He didn't really follow his rules when he played chess. He, he, you know, he, he looked at the board, and if the board called for an exception to his rules, then he, he played the exception. Right? And he often played the exception, but his, still, his style is going to help you. His rules are going to help you, right? Um, but if you take them as rules with them. Anyway, he lays out a list of things you should be looking for uh, when you're playing chess. Classic. And this is the new algebraic edition, which I read much better than I do the descriptive. But I read the descriptive. Some of you are like really freaking annoying, complaining about, oh, it has descriptive notation. Yeah, so what? Everybody used descriptive notation like 30 years ago and beyond. Right? It's, it's easy to read. It's easy to understand. Is it as easy as algebraic notation? No. Is it as... Uh, is it as what? Is it easiest to write down? No, but still, it's it's not difficult, right? It's not difficult to understand. Sure, it's more of a pain to write out, but it's not if more difficult to understand, right? I have a hard time like figuring out when I'm black where I'm on the A file or the H file. I still get confused about that. So, queen pawn, rook, or king pawn rook, or king rook pawn whatever is not and is nothing more difficult. Uh, okay, I will stop nagging you now. Next. So, carrying on from Ninzovich, here we go. Right, John Watson advances some Ninzovich, right? So this is kind of like a chess development book. Not kind of, it is a chess development book. And specifically towards Ninzovich, which is why I put this right after Ninzovich's book. Right, so you're getting Ninzovich. He's telling you what Ninzovich said. And this might even be a good substitute for my system. If you don't want to read my system... You can read this book, and this book will kind of give you a cursory view of Nimzovich and then tell you how things are changing from Nimzovich 
right? So this is good. This is good chess development. This will lead to a better understanding. But if you want a more thorough understanding, read my system, then read this book. Next. Now, one of the most famous books here in America, at least. Uh, and, and everything I should, everything I'm saying here is should be like prefaced by here in America, because there are some chess classics that we have no idea, or we don't have access to because they're not translated into English. There are some Russian books that we don't have access to, right? And I'll I'll give you an example of a book later, um, of books that we don't have access to. As a matter of fact, maybe I'll just pull it from the shelf since I'm talking about it. And I'll do it right after I do this. Let me move this laundry thing out of the way. I need to get to my books. Anyway, so here's Reassess Your Chess by Jeremy Silman. This is a holistic approach to chess. You're getting introductory stuff somewhat, but you have to kind of know how to play chess already. And then you're getting, like, look, do this, do this, do this, right? This is the important things about ranks. This is important things about files. This is important things about space. This is important things about diagonals. The bishops belong on these squares. The knights belong on these squares. The queen belongs on these squares. These are the optimal squares for your pieces, right? Do this. Um, prophylactic moves. Do this. At least the dynamic play. Develop your pieces, right? All of this. This is a holistic approach how to improve at chess. And it's a nice, slow, steady approach, and someone's a nice writer. All right, so if you want to get good at chess, you can read Nimzovich, but this is an easier, more accessible uh, way to go about it. I'm not saying it's a better way, but it is more accessible, which might be ultimately more important than anything else. Jeremy Sillman, fourth edition, nice, humongous one. I have the third edition, but I upgraded simply because the book is much bigger, and he does change a little bit. I wouldn't have done done it for the changes, but the size of the book, it's humongous, right? Okay. And size does matter. Next. The Road to Chess Improvement by Alex Yermolinsky. Um, so this is kind of another... This is less holistic, but it is still in the same vein as Improve Your Chess, right? Um, so let me look at the table of contents here. Um, part one, trends, turning points, and emotional shifts. So not really tactical stuff, not really in-game stuff, but like, uh, you know, stuff slightly beyond that. Second, openings and early middle game structures. So we're talking about structures, pawn structures, middle game structures. And by the way, if you want to get good at chess, end games, and then you have to really eventually learn pawn, pawn structures. Pawns are the heart and soul of your chess position, right? You need to understand pawns. You need to understand how to attack with pawns, different pawn formations, the wedges, right? The flanking pawn, flanking pawns, does that make sense, right? The pawns are where they're, they're two abreast, right? Pawns when then they have the little wedge, pawns when then the wedge is like reversed. Um, when you have a diagonal of pawns, I should know these names. I do know these names, I don't know, it's just on camera and everything, I'm forgetting. Uh, okay, and then you have tactical mastery and strategic skills. So that's the, the basic breakdown. So it is a improving yourself a chess book, but it's kind of uh, narrowed in scope. It's not as holistic as uh, Silman's or Nimzovich's even. Okay, next. Improve your chess, right? Improve your chess. That's the whole point, right? Uh, learning from the champions. So this is another chess development, history of chess book. Right, you improve by learning from the champions. Um, Lars Bo Hansen, um, not related to Little Bo Peep, um, is a nice author. Right, and he has a nice writing style. He doesn't he doesn't overdose on variations. He doesn't kill you with you know tediousness. But you're going to have to go through all these chess books. You're going to have to go through, except for maybe like the autobiographies or the biographies that are not like that don't cover the games, except you have to go through like you're learning a language, right? If you're learning Latin, you have to go hic, hike, hook, hoyas, 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 or whatever it is. I've already forgotten, right? So, and then you have to learn like, oh, hic is the nominative singular, right? And then hike 
is the, I don't even know what they are anymore, feminine, masculine, neuter, uh, nominative, genitive. This is just me showing off my Latin. Anyway, so we get the Romantic era, the Scientific era, the Hypermodern era, the new, the new dynamism, the age of universality, creative cr concreteness, and chess in the future even, right? So Lars Bohansson is from the future. What you should read books from the future, right? You'll be ahead of your time. Bum bum. Eh. Try it out. You might like it. Revolutionize your chess, right? Victor Moskalenko. Victor Moskalenko is a famous chess author currently, and he's got some good books that I wish I owned, but I don't have that kind of skrilla, right? Although I do have a, I do have a lot of chess books. Which makes it seem like I'm kind of wealthy. I'm not. I'm really not. Okay. Um, but but I tell people I am. Uh, in real life, at least. Here we go. All right. So you revolutionize your chess. Um, table of contents. Uh, end game. Oh, so this is what I like about this book. Uh, you're, you see that he starts with the end game, right? Hello, Capablanca. Middle game. Yes. Then openings, right? In that order, right? In that order. So Victor knows what he's talking about. Victor is giving you the chest in the way you should be studying it. Listen to Victor. That should be a, a series. Listen to Victor. That's not very creative, but anyway. Here we go. Tips for young players, right? And tips for young players doesn't mean you're like eight, nine years old. It means you're new to chess, right? So if you're like 40 years old learning chess, you're a young player. You should you should you should jump at the chance of being called young for maybe the last time in your life. Matthew Sadler is a good author, uh, not a grandmaster or anything, but a good chess player and a good author of chess books. Um, tips for the young player. So what are we talking about, Matthew? Look, the opening, the general principles. Everybody should know those general principles. Opening, so maybe you don't die in the opening all the time. Then he moves to the middle game. But notice that he starts with the opening, then the middle game, right? This is not a good way. Then middle game tactics, then end game principles. This is pretty much like the wrong way to approach chess. But you don't have to study these books in the chapter orders. You can, now that you know better, you can study them in the order that you think is more important. Then building an opening repertoire. Really, I would really, that's anathema to young players. Stay away from this kind of stuff for now. And middle game positional play, end game. Finally, and uh, training and thoughts for the future. These guys are all from the future. All right, but it does have puzzles and solutions, right? You always want that. You want a book that gives you uh, lessons, but then you want to you want that lesson to be reinforced, or you want to be evaluated on how well you learned. And you can only do that, like besides over the board games and like evaluate your games with quizzes and solutions. Right. If you think you learned a lesson by just reading the chapter and then you're like, okay, on to the next one. No, you're kidding yourself. Right. You're kidding yourself. It's just a feeling. Right. Understanding is both an actual accomplishment and it is also just a feeling. Right. You sit in class, you listen to a lecture and you're like, yeah, I get it. Oh, I really understand the lecture. You go home, and you try to do the homework and you're like, oh, shit. Maybe I didn't understand the lecture. Right. I don't get this. And so then you come to class and you're like, you didn't do the homework or you did hardly any of it. And you got to ask questions because you really didn't understand, right? Feeling like you understood is not actually understanding. When you can sit there and like do the work and get the solutions, then, oh yeah, you understood. But that's a separate thing. Okay. Next. Uh, I want to wrap this up in like 10 minutes. Power of Pawns. Jorg Hickel, Jorg, Jorgen, Jorg, 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 Hickel. The power of pawns. If you want to ever get to the advanced level, if you want to be an advanced player, besides learning the end games, you're gonna need to understand pawns. I forget who said that pawns were the heart and soul of chess. Something to that effect. You need to understand pawn play. So. This is a good book. Also, another good book. 
Pawn Structure Chess, Andrew Soltis. Right, I have actually two copies of this book. Don't ask me why. Well, you know why, because I forgot I had one and I bought a different version. Understanding Pawn Playing Chess, Drazen Marovic. Drazen Marovic. Why do I put on this terrible Russian accent when I say these names? Um, a grandmaster shows you how to make the most of your pawns. That's just a flashy title. I don't care if he was a freaking janitor as long as he explained how to make the pawns, how to make these moves well, I would buy the book. Pawn power and chess. Hans. Hans. That's my German. That's my Hitler. Hans. Moch. Chmoch. Kmoch. I have no idea how to pronounce that, obviously. But I'm sure it's Flemmy. This is a classic. Hard to read. Hard. If you think if you think end games are hard to study, pawn structure books are hard to study. At least for me. Um, okay. Next, moving on. Oh, one more book in that regard that I kind of skipped. Another again here is Eugene again Zanowski Borowski. How not to play chess, which is a different approach to chess strategy. But it's basically chess strategy, right? In other words, his not to list is. are things to avoid which is basically the opposite of things to do right so if you want to fight for the center don't give up the center right so this is not, this is just a i don't know this is just a like a, a catchy title um so look at look at the topics uh, avoid mistakes oh really that's great advice right okay uh, do not make the opening moves automatically and without reflection okay that's also uh this is this is trivial stuff. This is trite advice. Anybody can make. I could have written this book so far from the titles alone of the contents, but of course, what he says is going to be instructive. I could have not have written that part, but I could have come up with these meaningless titles. Uh, do not memorize variations. Try to understand them. Common sense. Do not believe all that you are told. I never believe what I'm told. In war, topography dictates the operations, and topography is determined by your pawns. Topography is determined by your pawns. The topography is the layout, right? If you don't know anything about maps, uh, I don't even know. What's the technical name for more? It's like cartography, right? Cart cartography? Anyway, um, do not abandon the center to your adversary. In other words, fight for the center, right? And then do not give up the open lines. Seize them, right? So in other words, put rooks in, on your open files. Put Get rooks in the back ranks, things like that. So... It's how to play chess. It's strategy. It's chess strategy. Uh, I misplaced this in the order of books, but there it goes. And then finally, the last three books that close out this shelf is kind of chess culture stuff. Um, the Grand Masters of Chess by Schoenberg. Um, get, here we go. Can you spot... Um, I was going to say, can you spot Morphe, but I can't spot Morphe. Is Morphe here? He's got to be the youngest one, maybe. I can't see from the camera angle. Anyway, so you're going to get um, a little walk through time here. Like we had the other, earlier, we have the... We have the... the is. They start with, like, is, is chess a game or a sport or an art or science, right? It's like the beginning of chess study, the beginning of chess uh, knowledge. Then we have the musician chess player, right? They try to be harmonious in the way they play. The mu the romantic Romanticism Plus, the age of Staunton. Staunton was really a good chess player for his time. Of course, he ducked Morphe because he knew Morphe was better, but he was still a very good chess player. Uh, and if you know the Staunton chess pieces, they're, like, elegant. Um, the Pleiades, the Professor, and the Black Death. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing Pleiades right. Uh, the Pride and the Sorrow of Chess, Triumph and Fall, Good Bishops and Bad Squares, The Pragmatist. Anyway, it's a history of chess development. Good stuff to know. In that vein, Masters of the Chessboard. Ready, another good author, is taking you through the similar idea. So this is probably a little bit more in-depth. This is more in-depth than this. You're going to ready just a better um, better chess coach. And then finally, 
uh, the world of chess. So, you know, a little chess culture, some pictures. Let's open up random, see what we get here. Right, guys playing in the street, some form of chess, some kind of pre-chess. Uh, then there's Morphe, right, there's Morphe, and I don't know who he's playing. Marshall? Maybe, I don't know. Or his friend, I forget his name, um, from France. Um, all right, so you get some pictures. You know, it's nice to see that, right? It's nice to see chess players, famous chess players, and when they were younger, and right, the culture of chess. You get a little bit of the games, so. All right, that's the second shelf. Um, end games, pawn, chess history, and the holistic approach to how to improve your game. Um, all right, that was bookshelf two. I'll come back with bookshelf three soon. Uh, all right, thanks for watching. Comment, leave them. Um, if you know anything about any particular book or any recommendations, right, leave them. Or if you just want to say, oh, my God, you're just such a noob, you're such a hack, you're such an American, you buy but you don't study. Or it's better if you say it in a Russian accent, accent you know, uh, you Americans, you just, uh, you just buy but you do not understand. In Russia, we understand everything. I'm starting to sound like a racist, which... I kind of enjoy. All right. Thanks.